Hey guys, let's see who we've got already on the live chat. We've got Natasha, Brandon, William, Shram. Hey Sam. What's up, Sam E? So I hope everyone is doing good. Jen, can you tell us about the Patreon thing so we can get going? Have you been practicing? Mm, sure. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you join us as a supporter on Patreon, we have three levels. We have the Taco Supremo, which is $10 a month. But if you join for $100 a year, you get a free uh, picture of Lieutenant Joe Kenda. You can join as a Taco Nacho for $5 a month or a small taco for $3 a month. Now, if you are a small taco, you get a shout out. Um, If you are a Taco Nacho, you get... Also a shout out and a card in the mail. Also, if you're a Taco Supremo, you get surprise shot, ad free episodes. Well, everyone gets ad free episodes, actually. So I don't know why you wouldn't join. Um, You get ad free episodes. Taco Supremos also get some swag from us and a surprise shot. And um, yeah, so I think it's definitely worth it. I would totally join as a Supremo because I have joined as a Supremo. So there you go. Mm. I did see that you lowered your membership, though. I did not. That's a lot. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and uh, I do we do have to welcome we have a new taco supremo this week awesome yes oh that's my grocery list did Amelia give you her address she did not Amelia I need your address I try to send you your swag pack and your address doesn't exist so I don't know what that's about post office was not impressed um let's see what's up Tina what's up Sable what's up what's up what's up Natasha Lauren welcome to Nanami I hope I'm saying your name right welcome Nanami from Japan right let's see we have a Japanese listener Mm -hmm. yeah nice um well that means means I can do more Japanese stories because those are the best. I believe I remember seeing her on the on Discord. Are the Japanese stories not the best out there? Like, there are some. Think really about everyone ones. that we've done. I mean, one of my favorites is still the penis snatching geisha. Yeah. So there's one that I am going to do. It is I can't give it away, but it's about a trunk, a car, tr- a, a taxi cab a, a, trunk. A Japanese story. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. now that um, we have a new joiner that's from Japan, we should do it and dedicate it to her. Yeah, that will. And we do still have, I keep forgetting, we have a one bottle of sake from Japan that my sister brought back. Oh, that's correct. That we haven't opened, mm. so... We will have to do it. Welcome, Cameron. First time catching a live. Cameron, what's up? Whoop, whoop. All right. Nice. And who's this, this shot surprise request shot? For? This surprise shot is for William. This is a specific request for a shot. Um, So I just put this together before I came in here. And I'm sorry if the pours are not all equal because I didn't think to just pour everything and mix it and pour it because I was stressed. So, but it has all the ingredients. You're really selling me on this. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise shots, surprise shots. We don't know what they are because they're a surprise. Cheers, y'all. Cheers. Cheers, William. Oh, I think that was really good. Wow, that was really good, actually. Yeah. What was it? It was called the Vegas Bomb. Vegas Bomb. Mm-hmm. Delicious, actually. And what was in it? I don't. So who knows if your proportions were incorrect? Because it was good. Yeah. Yeah. It, <laughs> what, Jen's version is good. What is the proportions of? Um, it is Crown Royal. That was Crown Royal. Damn, that shit was smooth, cranberry. Though. Not just Crown Royal. <laughs> cranberry. <laughs> Crown Royal. Cranberry. Um, peach schnapps. Peach schnapps and Red Bull. Yes. You asked me what ingredients we had. Damn. Wednesday. That yeah. was really good. It was like no burn. Most people want to see me do these weird faces, which are real faces. Yeah, you're terrible at taking <laughs> shots, actually. I, I've always been. Hey, Katie and Christopher. Lauren says if she downgrades and upgrades again, can she make us do another Vegemite shot? Absolutely not. That was the worst that oh, we've yeah. no, taken. That, no, that was not the worst. The worst was the Everclear. Oh, that was really bad. Yeah, that was really bad. That was also very but I stupid. But I think the Vegemite was worse, maybe. The egg one... Not as, not nearly as bad as we thought it was going to be. Yeah. That's for sure. The egg one was pretty good. Oh, man. I am ready. You guys already know what we're doing. Part two of mm-hmm. a serial killer. Mm-hmm. 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 So this is... Uh, each episode is going to be kind of standalone, right? But there's going to be three more on Arthur Shawcross, the Genesee River Killer. This guy... Oh, my God. This guy is freaking terrible, dude. You were... Uh, terrible, man. You were very intently reading that book this week. Yeah, I was, man. That So we're actually reading from three different books tonight. So I'm going to go ahead and shout them out now before I get started. This is the main one. This one's hard to find. Um, You can't find this one anywhere. It's out of print. And this one's by Dr. Joel Norris. It's just his interviews with Arthur 
Shawcross. And he's the guy that came up with all his disorders. You know, he's got a lot of disorders, but he's got a vitamin B deficiency. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. We haven't really gotten into that yet. And he's also has this this disorder. He is an XYY. Y. You, you know, like, yeah. What, what are you? Chromosome? Isn't it Y female or something? Yeah, uh, no, it? Y is a male chromosome. So he has an extra Y chromosome. So it should be X, X, Y. That's no, what I have. No, it should be X, Y. It should be one X, one Y. Don't know. All right. Well, it says this condition was evidenced as early as elementary school as a learning disorder, which could have been correlated with his X, Y, Y genetic disorder. Hmm. X, Y, Y male children are often loners or runaways and act differently from everyone else. They are prone to violent re- interactions. So this dude has a whole gamut of problems, man. <laughs> like that's not even the vitamin B deficiency. That's like just him being not even the right X Y chromosome. Right, crazy. But what what are you thinking about, Nicole? I feel like <laughs> <laughs> you flossy. I was I went back to my sixth grade science class and I was like, Were you doing the pundit squares? This? What was this lesson again? Yeah, I can't remember. Pundit squares. Pundit, pundit, pundit squares. Tell me the guy. If you can tell me the monk. Mendel. Yep. What was his first name? Not Howie. <laughs> <laughs> Howie Mendel. Gregor. Gregor was his name. That's correct. Are you sure it wasn't Edward? Yes. No, I think she's, it's I think Gregor. she's right. Mm. <laughs> Howie. <laughs> Not Howard. I saw he's got a, a podcast. <laughs> I don't think anyone listens uh, to it. <laughs> yeah. Why would they? Who who would be interested in what that guy's doing? I don't know. But they're people who listen to podcasts listen for murder. <laughs> Speaking <laughs> of podcasts and murder, um, there's a show on Peacock. If you guys haven't seen it uh, or heard about it, it's called Based on a True Story. And uh, Jen, are you watching true crime when no. you were not supposed to be watching no, true crime? No, I'm not. No, because it's not true crime. It's just uh-huh. a show about a couple who run into a killer and then they're like instead of turning him in let's do a podcast with him is it a tr- is oh it- my god that yeah. would be us is yeah. it a real case no it's fictional it's fiction so they're doing a podcast with the killer yeah so I don't understand he's not in prison <laughs> no. correct it's like it's, a weird Dexter it's a it's a fictional show starring yeah. Kaylee Kuoko and Chris Messina and another guy and anyway so they so so they happen to come across a guy who is a serial killer and the wife listens to all kinds of true crime stuff um which I don't know how like true crime junkie and morbid got shout outs on that show, but no one approached us about shouting us out on that show anyway. <laughs> well, but- they were probably just looking for the best ones, you know, <laughs> not number 15, not, not, not the, number 15, the worst stuff. <laughs> well, <I> mean- <laughs> anyway, so they run in, they, they come across this guy, they figure out he's a serial killer and she's like, Oh, like let's make money off of him being a serial killer and not turn him in. Essentially. Mm. I'm on episode smart, four. A smart idea. All right. Tonight we're going to thanks. Thanksgiving Day. What day is that, Jen, in November? Uh, it depends. It's the third Thursday. Thursday. Third Thursday of November every year. And that's where we bear, we put Jesus on the cross, and then he arose three days later on Easter. What is Thanksgiving about? Oh, that's where we slaughter all them Indians. What the fuck did we do on Thanksgiving? I can't remember. We watched the parade. <laughs> the parade. <laughs> Watch we the- eat, we <laughs> eat and eat and eat and eat, mm-hmm. and then I, and uh, then after the parade is the dog show that I watch, and I try to force Murphy to watch with me, but he has no interest. Well, look at the Josie used to watch it with me. Tonight we are going to Thanksgiving Day, and we're going right here, Turning Point Park. Do you want to take a guess why this is called Turning Point? Um, because it's a roundabout, or like you can't go forward; you have to turn around. Damn, Jen's kind of on there. So this the Turning Point, and this is in Rochester, New York, is. Is that name was given to it because of this right here. Boats will come in and then they can actually do a U-turn mm. and go back out. Mm. So okay. turning point part. I saw an ad for like being a member of a boat club where you can like rent boats instead of having to own them. And I was like, I would like to be a member of that because I've always wanted to. I just know somebody boat. that is a member of that. Right? Yeah. So I checked out the membership and it's like membership costs anywhere. From- <laughs> it's a couple grand. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm like. Mm. A couple grand a yeah. month? No. No. Oh. no it's like. like- a year. It's up to eight thousand dollars, and monthly is up to like two hundred and forty-five dollars or something like that. And I was like, yeah, I guess I will not be joining that boat club. Can it's you fun. rent any boat you want? Anytime? Yeah, you just take out any boat you want. Let's get a mega yacht, dude. I, that's the goal. Yacht murder to me. Y'all think I'm joking about and then it? We can, no, like, we're we, not joking. We can about actually this at all. we get the yacht, we uh-huh. rent it, and then we just part it out. We piece it all, like sell the furniture, sell the chandeliers. I feel like we're not <laughs> understanding the point of having a yacht. But anyway, the, the Genesee River Thanksgiving Day. 1989. That's the November 23rd. Mark Stetzel, he is a local and he is a hunter and there are a lot of woods around this area. Was he looking for a turkey? 
Yeah, Jen, he was. Oh, yeah, look at that. Looking for a turkey. It says right there. So he was actually walking his dog, and this man turns into Charlotte Point Park. Oh, Charlotte is the, the village. Mm-hmm. Okay, I forgot to mention that. So this is near Rochester, but but this is the village of Charlotte. So this being kind of like all the, you know, grocery shops and stuff. Mm. Strip mall. Strip mall. Do they have strip clubs and strip malls? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, they're called uh, Asian massage parlors. No, that's something different. Uh, that's where you go for a happy ending. Yeah, that's true. All right. Mark Stetzel is walking his dog and his his dog picks up a scent. Now, no one's out there. It's Thanksgiving Day, November. It's freezing out. There's snow on the ground. It's extremely cold. This is in Rochester, around Rochester. So it's upstate. And the weather there, especially in November, you don't want to be out. Mm-hmm. No one's out walking. It's desolate. Anyway, this man, he's walking his dog and his dog runs down an overgrown trail. It's a game trail, an old one, not even used anymore. The dog, the mutt runs down there because he picks up a scent, you know? And what is that scent, you think? Febreze, Jen? Mm, No, I would like to guess it's probably rotting human flesh. Nicole's reading from three different books tonight. One by Jack Olson, big true crime writer, about the life of Arthur Shawcross. Another one by Dr. Joel Norris, the psychiatrist that interviewed Arthur Shawcross. And also one called The Shawcross Letters, which was from this guy named John Paul Fay. Didn't read his story, didn't really care but he sent letters back and forth to Shawcross in prison. So it's literally the unedited words coming from Shawcross's mouth and he thought no one would ever see. So you're going to see like really what this dude's like, you know. From author Jack Olson, Stetzel followed his pet to a flattened area where deer bedded down for the night. He came to a swatch of ice encrusted carpeting, burlap side up, its color almost matching the vegetation. A bare human foot protruded from a corner. All right. Hmm. So it is a body. Go figure, right? Man, we've been, we've done this way too fucking many times. You know, we are definitely desensitized. What if I just started this story and it wasn't a body? It was just a nice carpet. And it was like, you know, like an Egyptian carpet. And this guy ends up selling it and makes a lot of money. And then we went down that route. Hmm. Okay. Y'all don't give a fuck. (laughs) No, I think I, as a reseller, I would be very interested in that story. <laughs> People would be like, I think that you're posting this to the wrong channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> wrong side hustle. Or what if he unrolled it and it really was a mannequin? Well, didn't we do a story about that, though? Well, about that play, the, like the church that was leaving clues about a murder that wasn't really a murder? Yeah. yeah. That had nothing to do with a mannequin. True. Dahmer if, was hanging out with some mannequins, if though. You, if you can, Yeah. Dahmer and her Baumeister. Oh, uh, yep. Herb's pool party. All right, I forgot you doing, about. Are you doing trivia? Yeah. If you can tell me. Wait, what did you just say? I usually don't listen, but. I didn't say anything. You reminded me of something. If you can tell me the name. Fuck, I don't know. At least he admitted he doesn't listen to me. That's nice. He doesn't listen to me either, if it helps. So this was a body in this. It doesn't. Just makes me sad for you. <laughs> Now that's marriage. Just in case you're wondering what to look forward to. <laughs> you don't look forward to anything. It's like purgatory. It's just marriage is just there, you know? Yeah. It's just like a state of just state of being. It's a yeah. state of having solid meals, companionship. I, I guess I would have Top to say notch. at least you don't have the existential fear of dying alone. But other than that, like no, you're I go still th- gonna die alone unless you're holding hands and both yeah, take sides. This cyanide isn't the pills. notebook, yeah. The dog sees this foot coming out of this carpet and then the man Stetzel runs back and calls the police. The police unroll the carpet to, and they see a female body face down, the right leg bent backwards at the knee. And from what I found out, the reason it was bent backwards, and it's in rigor mortis, so it's stuck, is this is in, indicative of forced anal incourse. Oh. All right. Now, lividity, you know what lividity is or liver mortis? It's like this bluish purple discoloration on the skin. Mm-hmm. That is basically when you die, your blood pulls up in a certain area. Now, this is really important. Lividity, or the bluish purple skin discoloration, was pulled up along the backbone. But what did I just say? That the female body was what? Rigor mortis. No, the female body that they found was face down. So, and that's an important clue, which means the blood shouldn't be pulled up at the backbone, the spinal cord, because the blood should be on the stomach in the abdominal area. Oh, yeah. That is, that, and that, with this story, the police didn't come out out to the media with it, but some things that they found were more disturbing than the murders themselves. The reason that this discoloration was on the backbone and she was found face down, it means the killer either stayed there with the body, which would be risky, or he came back and moved the body 
to an a, to another place. He moved the body, flipping the body, you know, face down, which was also what they found why the leg was bent back. So he he they think they had he, intercourse with the corpse. He had intercourse. That is what they're thinking so far. You guys ignored my pun. That I was, was my nose just went up and said thinking ew. Quote the decomposing skin was covered with a milk white gelatinous coating as Jen drinks her frothy beer. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Modeled with varying shades of brown and dark red. Oh, wait, why brown and dark red? From the author Jack Olson, the medical examiner commented that the wound probably had died of asphyxia, but the neck area was too decomposed for a positive diagnosis. The body was slashed from the breastbone to crotch, a deer hunter's cut. As a cop observed, the privates were clotted with blood and the genital lips appeared to be missing. You want to say something, Jen, with your lips? Use your lips to talk, Jen. <laughs> Use your lips to talk. <laughs> That's fucked. Jen. <laughs> it is fucked. You can move on then. Who does this remind you of? Um, Albert Fish. Fish. Um, Dean. Didn't he do the what deer? Was, what, Dressed out like right. a deer? We're talking about Arthur, Arthur Shawcross tonight. Yeah. And this specific one, it, it reminds me of a lot of Ed Gein. Mm. And do you, do you remember the woman's name that he did this to? His girlfriend? The um, one that wasn't him, the, the one that was actually dead when he went on a uh, date with her? Martha? No. Martha? Margaret? That's my aunt's name. I like that name. How do I, how, what the fuck, how am I supposed to know? Mm. It does, is your aunt have the monopoly on the name Martha? <laughs> trademark. <laughs> Maybe she fucking does. <laughs> aunt Martha, trademark. Right. Bernice Sable said. Should I show you the photo of um, sure. Bernice Warding? Why not? All Good right. job, Sable. I'll give you a point for that. And Mary Hogan. I do have a question though about trademark. Do is our, is talk murder? Is we that are trademarked. Trade yes, talk murder to me or just talk murder? Talk murder to me. Mm -hmm. The logo. Got it. That's why I thought, but I wasn't sure because during that show, a couple of the podcasters were like, "Who wants to talk murder?" And I was like, "I feel like we should get some residual oh, should, income for that." Who said that? I want to sue every one of them. I'll show you in the episode. I'm gonna sue them. I don't know how. We do not have the phrase trademark. Well, we have the logo. Yeah, apparently it's really hard to trademark fucking anything these days. A deer hunter's Cut. The privates were clotted with blood and the genital lips appear to be missing. So that's crazy. What do you guys think so far? This Is this going to get worse? I'm just going to bet. Yeah. I don't think <laughs> it's going to get better. Is the next episode going to ruin Jen's weekend? Probably. Nope. Because it's already ruined. <laughs> uh, all right. We're going to go back to this female body here in a second. But at this point, this is the 11th body found. And all, all uh, prostitutes? Look at this man. Map right here. And I know it's kind of hard to see. Look at this map. All right. Look, look over here. I know it's kind of hard to see, but you see there, these are the, these are the body dump locations. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh. All along the river. All, all along the river. And then there's eight up here. There's eight literally next to each other. He just, like some of the bodies were actually floating together. Oh. So, all right, here's something crazy. You have a killer killing all these women, mutilating them and throwing them into the river right beside each other. And he's doing this while cops are trying to catch him. So he is actually, he's doing this while cops are doing surveillance, a heightened surveillance, and they can't catch him. Bum, bum, bum. How how insane is that? I mean, you saw the, those, the bodies are right beside each other. Was he like disguised as a hunter while he's These cops doing are this, I wonder? This, the cops are stopping everybody and yet they just miss him. Does they hide the body? and a deer. Ow. And and what we're going to talk about later is most of the time these women weren't killed there. They were killed like in the first story. Dorothy Blackburn, where was she killed? She was killed behind a warehouse. Mm. She was killed behind so a she, warehouse. So he's but moving she, the body. But she ended up in the river. So he kills her and then leans her back in the car like a passenger. Oh, is the air good for you? The, and the, Do you, you like the this HOV station? Lane. And then he drives her like a passenger every one of these, 11 at this point, and he drives her through these police surveillances and they just cannot just catch this guy. Do they guy. just assume that his passengers are always napping? I mean, crazy. Rochester Police Department, before this, 90% clearance ratio on homicides. Wow. And now it went down to 30% within six months. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> right? Jeez. <laughs> 
Deputy Chief Terrence Rickard said this week, and this is from a paper in when this happened. Deputy Chief Terrence Rickard said that there were at least three killers responsible for all of these deaths. Three killers. That's weird. All right. We have a serial killer out there. Everyone knows, but there's three of them. This guy obviously never read any true crime books because there is no way in hell there would be three serial killers working in the same damn area. That just doesn't happen at all. You know, the, the chance of you getting killed by a serial killer is less than the chance of you winning the lottery or getting bitten by a shark. The police thought there was three different serial killers working in this area, which is unheard of because the MOs were all different. Three strangled, one stabbed, one shot, one run over with the car, two beaten to death, and then the rest are unknown because they were already too decomposed. That is very interesting that they are all so different. Yeah. One of the reasons they can't catch the killer is because this killer left no semen. So actually, I want to... Is he using protection? Huh? Is he using protection? That's a that's a good theory, but no, he is not. One of the reasons that police thought there was so many killers is because the different MOs. Huh. Different MOs of killing the victims. Did you hear what I said, Jen? Different MOs. Well, yeah, but let me go back. Um, three strangled, one stabbed, one shot, one run over with a car, <gasps> two beaten to death, and the rest of the women are unknown because they were too decomposed. Oh, no. This victim, the 12th victim, is also a different situation because this victim wasn't actually even a prostitute. This is her right here. Can you describe her? Oh, she looks like youngish, maybe late teens, early 20s. I was going to say like 16 in this, actually. I Young. Don't, I don't know when this photo was taken, but okay. when she died, she was 26. And this is the female that was rolled up into the carpet that oh. we started with. This is a different case altogether because she's not a prostitute. Mm. And I don't know if you can tell by looking at her, and I'm, I'm, not, trying to be, I'm not trying to be crude in any way, was she, did she have an, an uh, intellectual impairment? There you go. She's actually mentally, she's a slow learner. Intellectually impaired, which is crazy because she's not a prostitute. Very to she, total different from his typical. Exactly, right? And this is her right here. I mean, it's, it's the sweetest girl. Like, what? what is she doing in the same river with all those other prostitute bodies still in that same river, that same location? What is? She, how does she get mixed up in that? She doesn't walk the streets. It's very ran it's it, it's an outlier for sure. Maybe he came across her in one of his fits of rage due to oh. his vitamin deficiencies. I'm not defending him. I'm just saying like maybe you said it was it, it was almost um unpredictable when he would, you know. Yeah. So maybe he just she just happened to be there and he His method her. of killing is also like the fact that that changes so much is mm -hmm. interesting mm -hmm. to me too. What did I say in the last episode uh about You said a lot of things. Wow, Jen. Makes me feel good about myself. Well, you do you you share a lot of information. And I think that the audience appreciates it. This girl's name is June Stotts. She is intellectually impaired. She is not a prostitute. However, she did walk the streets because she was friends with all the women down there. Mm. She was known around town as Jay. That's all I knew her by is Jay. She was 26 when she died. Before this, she would never walk the streets. She was kept in a nice family inside, you know, in, in the home. Kind of sheltered? Kind of sheltered, well taken care of. However, tragically, two years before she was murdered, her mother died. Mm. And that shattered everything. Her mother dies. She couldn't handle it. She walks out of the family house and she starts living on the street. The family can't find her. They spent a year, two years trying to find her. They can't. They don't know where she went. She just disappeared. Mm. I can't say a lot about her personality because a lot of people don't know about her personality. She was a she was a closed book, but we do know her mother died two years before she was found murdered and she just walked out and started living on the streets. She did start living with a man, a Joseph Tibbetts, a 62-year-old who didn't even know how to contact her family when the police found her body and then they contacted him because they he didn't know her family. Jeez. He was more of a father figure to her. For three years, I never knew anything about June. She was so quiet, said her boyfriend of three years, Joseph Tibbetts. She kept everything locked up inside her. That's what Stotts' sister would say. She was mentally handicapped, unemployed, and supported financially 
essentially by Tibbetts, she would walk the streets, be friendly with everyone. She would sleep. She would actually still sleep on the streets, even though she had an apartment with this Tibbetts. Tibbetts reported her missing on November 11th, the same day that they found another body in the Genesee River of Francis Brown, 22, which was right up the street. From the author Jack Olson, soon Tibbetts and Jay were sharing his one room walk up on the fifth floor of a rooming house in Chestnut Street. I took her in, the retiree explained later. I was afraid that if she was on her own, something would happen to her. She was like a daughter to me. All right. No signs of struggle, which is another weird thing. Every one of the victims, no signs of struggle. Most of the victims. Jay was friends with Arthur Shawcross and his wife at the time, Hmm. Rose Wally. We're not going to get into his wife, but Jay, June Stotts, this woman that was found rolled up in the carpet, was good friends with Arthur Shawcross. They met while Arthur was at Dunkin' Donuts. After every murder, he goes to Dunkin' Donuts. He sits there and he will even say to the psychiatrist that there were times he was sitting there with his coffee and in the next booth over, the cops are discussing the case. That's nuts. And he's just sitting there sipping his coffee. How crazy is that shit? That's wild. That's that's wild. You know, Dunkin' just came out with a new flavor, strawberry cheesecake iced latte. It does not sound good to me. That does not sound like it mixes with coffee. It doesn't. I said that June Stotts walks the streets. She walked the streets. That's where Arthur first saw her. Arthur knew that she was mentally handicapped Mm -hmm. and he talks like, okay, I'm going to take care of her or I'm at least going to tell her that she can come for dinner anytime she wants. Before she was murdered, she would go to the Shawcross residence about three times a week to get dinner, to eat dinner with the family. And now she ends up in a carpet. Mm. And you know who killed her? Who? Stetzel, the guy with the dog, Jen. Got it. (laughs) It was a flip up all this time. (laughs) Just kidding. It was not. It was not. It was not not this person. Let us make that clear. It was a joke. All right. So this is his story right here. Now, it's, it's really hard to like break down Shawcross and what he says. A lot of the stuff he says is fantasy, but it is a fantasy that even he believes. So it's kind of reality to him. So a lot of things that he says, you can't really, you can't really think that that's exactly what happened, but eventually the truth does come out. But this is what he says. One day, and this was on the 11th of November, he spots Stotts. Remember, remember the 11th of November. He spots Stotts sitting on a park bench and he comes up and she asks him, you know, since they know each other, if she can ride with him. He's driving his little blue Chevrolet and he's like, sure, whatever. They go into the village. They buy some bread and some chips and some Cokes and cookies. They were going to go to the piers and feed the the seagulls. Mm -hmm. That's what they wanted to do. Bad move. You don't feed the seagulls. They'll attack you. Now, remember, this is a family friend. Arthur and and June Stotts have never been sexual. June Stotts is actually still a virgin. She's never been sexual with anybody, mm-hmm. ever. They're friends. Right. All right. Anyway, they start walking along the piers. They're looking at the boats. And from what Arthur says, he thinks that June maybe thought this was a romantic getaway. We walked hand in hand on along the piers, Shawcross said, describing the encounter as a romantic interlude. When we were walking along the boat dock, she kissed me. I I don't know why. Mm. Where'd you learn to kiss like that? Arthur says. From watching TV. They walked some more and then he found this old mildewed rug near the water and he spread it out like a picnic setup. She kisses him again. He says that she gets this really concerned look on her face. She says that she's a virgin but wants to be taught. She doesn't know what she's doing. She wants him to teach him. Oh no, this poor girl. I know, right? Quote, she asked me if I would show her how to do certain things. And then he explained well, a woman usually strips down and then the man strips down and he's explaining this. Now she has the mind of a child, you know, she learned to kiss from watching TV. How, how completely screwed up is this? It, I'm kind of conflicted because how dare he take advantage of this this moment, but also just because someone may be disabled or intellectually impaired does not mean that they don't have the right. Like she was in her 20s at this point. Like she doesn't have like she has the right to be sexual with someone. But I just feel like this may not have been the best choice for her considering no, okay. how she ended up. But, so, but, she, but she didn't understand. And he took advantage of that. I feel like I don't know. I just I don't know. Well, I will say that she was friends with both Arthur and his wife. Right. She would go to dinner so she knows that he's married. Right. She goes to the house every three three times a 
week. So she knew he was married. Oh yeah. I'm not saying she's in the wrong. He, I feel like, you know, he could have, he could have stopped. This is from the Shawcross psychiatric interview. From Arthur Shawcross's psychiatric interview. It wouldn't, I couldn't get it in, right? Couldn't get it in. And at that moment, you know, she picks up her hands back. She says, oh my God, right? You know, she says, I'm going to tell the police, you know, I panicked, you know, I pushed her back down on the ground. I says, you're the one who asked me to do this to, for you. I said, now nah, you want to, you know, spoil it and go say, and you tell the cops said, well, I made a mistake. And that's when I started to sweat again. And the brightness, the quietness, you know? Mm. So that's him speaking. Now it's interesting. He actually does an interview under hypnosis and a lot of this stuff comes out. He almost kind of reminds me of like Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah, he yeah, does. Yeah. He, he, he's uh, yeah. like, has very he's nervous, funny. jumpy energy. Yeah. yeah. like, And he's kind of big, not big, but you know, just kind of bulky. Well, who, maybe it's not Rodney Dangerfield. I know who Rodney I mean, Dangerfield is, but like, I, like, does he not look kind of like him a little bit? Oh, a little bit, kind of, yeah, yeah. but not really. I mean, a little bit. Eh. Now, this is what he says. He's trying to put it in. She's a virgin, so it wouldn't go in. And then she starts to scream. And then she's like, oh, my God, what am I doing? What are we doing? I'm going to tell everyone. I'm going to tell your wife. I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell everyone we were down here. I'm going to tell your wife. I'm going to tell the police you raped me. Now, this is a 26-year-old handicapped woman. Like That would not look good in Shaw Cross's record. No. And plus, this is the 11th victim. He is already in a feeding frenzy, as you're about to see while we call it the feeding frenzy. Okay. Like a shark. Like a shark, yeah. So, all of a sudden, now he's nervous that his wife is going to know and the cops are going to know that he was out here raping raping this woman. So, at that point, he does what he always does. He takes his one right hand and he grabs her neck and he chokes her to death. Now, in the first episode, Dotsie Blackburn, he used his one right hand because he was holding his severed penis, right? And that oh. is staunch in the blood. However, I forgot that his penis was severed. <sighs> How, yeah, that was man. so long ago. However, there that is actually not the reason that he only chokes with one hand. Digging deeper into this story, there's a specific reason, and it's so effed up. It's not even remotely, like, I don't even want to talk about it now. We'll talk about it on the next episode. But he uses one hand for a reason. So he's choking June Stotts out with one hand, and, you know, eventually, that's it. Well, you said he had big hands, right? Yeah, he's got big mitt hands. He's so strong. In the Shawcross letters, he talks about lifting 450 on the bench. Dang. Like, that's a big lift, you know? That right? means he could lift, like, two of me. It's, it's uh, strong. She had a little pocket knife with her. She carried it around everywhere. Her sister was really worried that her walking on the street, someone would take advantage of her. So she bought her this little pocket knife, like a little Swiss Army knife. It had is pink. It had little roses on it, you mm-hmm. know, kind of girly. But Yeah, nowadays people hand out mace. Just in case she has that pocket knife, he stole it from her dead body. Oh. Quote, I kind of liked it. He liked robbing dead people? One week later, a week goes by. A week. He revisits the corpse. You remember I said that the lividity didn't match up with right. why the corpse was on, on face down. Yeah. It should have been on its back. He revisits the corpse just like he will do in every other story we talk about. He revisits the corpse. The body was laying in the same spot, undisturbed. Now he sits down by the body and starts to remember about that day when she kissed him a week ago and how passionate she was. Quote, I was smitten. I know that. He is sitting by this corpse. Now, Mm -mm. the decomposition of the corpse is slowed down because it's cold, right? Mm -hmm. And and that's one of the reasons why he can do this. Revisit There was snow on the ground. Yeah, exactly. He then, he's smitten. I was smitten thinking about how she kissed him. So romantic. He then takes his hand and puts it on her breast and he was actually really surprised that she was still warm to the touch. If you what? Know. A week later? Uh, and I gotta figure out which one. It says it was warm. <laughs> Thanks. It was warm, he said. It was limp, so I screwed her some more. I do not like that. So he actually went back. This is one of the reasons the police didn't give any details, because it's not just someone's killing these prostitutes and these women. They're going back. They're revisiting the body multiple times, and then they're penetrating the body. Her leg was stiff. He actually, in rigor mortis, made that leg go up so he can penetrate her anally, her dead body. Not even when she was alive. This is when uh, literally almost a week after she was dead. He was so smitten. And then he penetrates her anally. I think this is a good time to take that shot now. <laughs> That's Crown Royal. Crown Peach. Woo! See that? That shot that William suggested was way smoother. Well, yeah, because it had a lot of other things in it. 
That was not alcohol. Okay. You had very little Crown Royal left at the beginning of this. But I Did ha- we finish the other bottle? I think so. But I bought this today. And I've heard it's very good. It I liked good. it. I mean, I would like to sip on it with something else, but... Are people still watching this shit? Yes. The trash. They've all left. It was limp, so I screwed her some more. Uh-huh. Jacked her leg up, anal intercourse, everything. And then he remembers, for some reason, it's probably because he was so smitten earlier when he left his wife's house, that he still had that little pocket knife. Oh, so cute. Oh, oh my God, it's so cute. Little oh. pocket knife, little, you know. It's, Token, trophy. It's a... Um, Memento. What do you call him? Swiss Army knife. So cute. He flips open the blade. It's like, oh my God, I can't believe I brought this with me. He slowly opens the blade and he's looking at the body that he just raped. Now, one of the questions I want you guys to think about, there's a couple of questions. I don't think I want to think about either of them. Is why he performs oral sex on every victim, including June Stotts. You mean after they're dead? Yeah, after they're dead and before they're dead. During this time, performs oral sex. All right. And another question is why there's no semen. He has, he, he rapes the victims, but he can never orgasm. There's only one person on the planet that can make Arthur Shawcross come to a complete orgasm. His wife? No, it's not his wife. His mom. Um, All right. Ooh. Now no, at this point. I don't like that. I don't. I <laughs> don't why have we been doing this? Why, <laughs> why did you say that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. It's the most fucked up thing I could think of. It, I, well, I would have to say, though, as fucked up as that is, like, does this guy have kids? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I, I would say, I would say as fucked up as what you said is, it would be better. That is better than saying his daughter, I, which I hope is not the I answer. Hope that's not the answer. He, he does have a daughter out there. Yeah. One of his wives was so happy that he beat her to miscarriage and she came out and said that after he was arrested. Oh my God, I'm so glad he beat the shit out of me so I miscarried his baby. Oh, <laughs> damn. <laughs> That's fucked. That damn. is fucked. But also, I feel like that- now, this guy can't help what he's doing. He has some disorders. He has here. a vitamin B deficiency. <laughs> Everyone, go take your fucking vitamin B right now. <laughs> I would have to say, like, you he, you say he can't help it, but like you can probably ah! help a little bit with therapy yeah. and vitamins. Like, go get some Centrum. You know, they started little. selling Centrum at the dollar store. So if you say you don't have enough money, then you're lying. Yeah, but Dr. Oz proved that most of those multivitamins aren't even. I mean, they don't even digest <laughs> in your system. Well, it's better ah. than trying to digest like crack cocaine. All right. Yeah. Well, what do you guys think? This can't get any worse. Anyway. I'm sure it will. Where I stopped. I uh, bet you it will. He's looking at the body. Ten bucks. It'll get worse. All right. I'll take that bet. No, you don't want to bet on that, Jen. You just lost ten bucks. <laughs> I, I what I meant to say was I agree with that. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> She's gonna give you an IOU. <laughs> Maybe one day. She bought the she bought the crown, crown royal. That counts. Yeah, and I brought something else for the next episode. It's in the fridge right now. Well, there you go. Okay, Doctor Dre. Next episode. I love Doctor Dre. It's the motherfucking D O W G Stoop Dog. He remembers that he brought this pocket knife for some reason. It's just screwed this dead corpse. I Eight. think you should. I think you have to say the word raped. Like he. Yeah, oh, you yeah. can't say screwed. Yeah, he raped her. That is not. I was. I thank you for saying that because yeah. I was like, I don't like that description. Well, he said screwed her some more. That's well, what yeah, he but he says. said that. You don't need to say that. You're better he, than him. Yeah. Because you don't fuck dead people or oh, kill people. Wow, that's such a big. That's such a <laughs> high that's bar. The bar. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what the second shot in episode one will do to us. Oh, this is me, and this is fucking dead people. This is fucking dead people. No. <laughs> All right. And so he slowly takes out this blade. Yeah. What does he do with the blade? Is he going to cut the rest of his penis off? Well, I told you that he deserves to. The uh, the title is neck to crotch. Oh, uh, so Nicole can read what he did with it. This is from his own words. This is when I don't like being the designated and, reader. And re- well, he stopped making me the designated reader. And so. read it. Read it slow, especially the second to last sentence. <clears throat> like really, really get in it. Then I took out the knife that I had taken from her and cut her wide open in a straight line down her chest from her neck to her asshole. Cut out her pussy and ate it. (gasps) Dragged her into the swamp, then put the rug over her head and left. Quote, I just opened the fat tissue and cut out the pussy and ate it. Why? I don't know. I just ate it. If you were going to 
repeat it. Why did you make me say it? To make you miserable. I'm just glad that I'm not the designated leader anymore. Holy shit. What the oh, fuck? Why do we do this to ourselves? I don't know if I need to say this, but I do not like that. Oh. All right, here's some of his uh, exact uh, questions here. Great, Jen, you can you can play a role in this one. And you have no idea why you cut her? No. Can you imagine any reason why you might have done that? No. How did you remove the vagina? I cut it around it. Then did you cook that flesh? Why should I cook it? I said I ate it. I was asking I was asking you if you cooked it before you ate it. No. What did you do while you ate it? That's a stupid question. I just sitting there in a daze. You were sitting there next to the body? I was eating. I had just ate it. I was looking at nothing, you know. I I don't know what I was thinking about. I was just there. Sitting? Yeah. Down by the water with her. You're stupid. <laughs> I mean, the psychiatrist, those kind of those stupid questions. <laughs> He's like, dude, I fucking ate it. What the fuck? <laughs> no, I didn't cook it first. Jesus Christ. This guy's a fuck. This guy gets, it gets a lot worse. This man is a monster. <laughs> no wonder you were like, man, this is a really good book. Now, he does claim that the reason he cut her from neck to crotch is because it speeds up decomposition, which he learned as a soldier in Vietnam, which we're going to talk about in the next episode. His Vietnam exploit were beyond comprehension, unthinkable. And that's going to immediately be followed by the murder of two innocent babies, two innocent children, right when he gets back from Vietnam. But he says he learned all this stuff from Vietnam, cutting off the heads, eating the vaginas, stuff like that. Now, this is from the Shaw Cross prison letters. This is what he says about June Stotts. June Stotts, we just talked about the body that was found in the Genesee River on Thanksgiving Day. She was the 11th found. She was mentally handicapped. She was a friend of the Shawcrosses, went to dinner at their house multiple times a week. He kills her because from what he claims, she said that she's going to tell his wife and tell the police that he raped her. Well, I mean, he chokes her to death, then goes back, revisits the body a week later, and then he cuts her open and then he eats her vagina. From the Shawcross prison letters, quote, I ripped one bitch open. Now, now these letters are to a, 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 a man, John Paul Fay, who is a murder bilious seller on eBay. And and I th- I didn't read his story, but he's kind of like that Nico Klaus guy that mm. has all these mm. fucked up problems and he's all fucked up in the head. Yeah. Anyway, I just read the, the actual letter portions, but this is what it said. Quote, I ripped the bitch open. June Stotts. She was a very good fuck, if you ask me. She kissed me everywhere and did me everywhere. Quite a gal, even if she was a retard of sorts. What the fuck? Wow. Like, that's the part that makes me the most mad. Like, like, what the fuck? You gotta Uh, remember, these guys do not have remorse, okay? No, he's a sociopath. Kind of. I don't know. Is he a psychopath or sociopath? I can never get No, I don't think he's any. uh, He's vitamin B deficient. Ah, That's right. I'm sorry. Quite a gal, even if she was a retard of sorts. Oh, well. She is history, and, and I cannot come back again. When I do go to hell, she will be there waiting there for me to do it all over again to her. Good theory. <laughs> In your dreams, no, What asshole. the fuck is wrong with you? Is this guy dead yet? I'm gonna go try to find him. He's not. Is he dead yet? Jen, there are four big disorders that he has. Number one, we're gonna talk about this thing that you said your papa may have in Vietnam. It's a color. Agent Orange. Agent Orange. He also has what we're gonna talk about, a lead serum excess. Lead poisoning is extremely dangerous. Yeah. And and let me break it down to you real quick. Arthur Shawcross is the serial killer that the psychiatrist and the doctors and the medical professionals, they came together and said, OK, here's this guy. Let's study this guy. Everything about him. Let's take all these blood tests. Let's do everything we can and study this guy and find out if he has any disorders. They found four that he has. We already went over the vitamin B deficiency, which we're going to go over. The, the other term for it is, quote, medical cancer. Cannibal. He has the XY chromosome disorder. Mm-hmm. Okay. He has a lead disorder. That's a lot of soldiers get that if, if they shoot a lot, mm-hmm. the, the lead and the bullets. Also, if you live in Detroit, and I'm not being funny here, but if you live in Detroit, which we do have a, a listener that lives Sable. in Detroit, Sable lives in Detroit, you got to be careful with the lead paint. Those houses still have lead paint in them. And there's a study that I read that it increases crime because lead poisoning causes irritability, 
sleep loss, violent outbursts, and even hallucinations. Wow. Arthur Shawcross had all this because okay. what was he doing in Vietnam? What was his job? He was delivering bullets and ammo to every outpost out there in Vietnam. He was around ammo, lead ammo, his entire term in Vietnam. He was actually eating soup out of the ammo cans that were lead-based, eating the soup. He was drinking water out of that lead-based. I mean, we talk about plastic now, like, you, oh, you shouldn't heat up plastic because uh, yeah. carcinogens. Same shit with lead poisoning. Like, this makes him but hallucinate. way worse, yeah. It makes him hallucinate. Right. When he comes back from Vietnam, he immediately starts this shit, mm. okay? So, we're going to talk about all that on the next episode, but unfortunately, that episode is just for our supporters uh, patreon.com slash talk murder if you like this then go there this is the Arthur Shawcross there will be two more after this we're going to do one right now and then we'll do the, the last one on uh, like Monday or something we have to get that done but okay. they will be out all week I hope you guys enjoyed that what do you any questions or anything yeah but so I mean no but yeah the questions I want you to think about for next episode like I said why couldn't he orgasm why does he only choke out the victims with one hand and and why oral I do have a theory on the one-handed thing and the, it's not a pleasant one the biggest one out there the biggest one that sums up arthur shawcross is why 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 does he perform oral sex even on these prostitutes no one does that but he does that as a default performs oral sex and it's a specific reason why and it's uh, pretty i can't disturbing. wait to learn more so anyway we'll be back in i don't know whenever you guys want to be back i don't need a, lo- a long break no like 15 minutes yeah i do want to take some more shots we'll do that one get back yeah okay i want to get drunk there you go all right that's all i got i hope you guys enjoyed it those episodes will be out next week the whole gamut of arthur shawcross so if you if you can't afford the patreon do not worry about it there will be out monday wednesday and friday for you guys the whole thing and we do stories all week so be sure to request whatever you guys want we got some great ones coming up we have richard ramirez coming up mm. we have hh holmes coming up Ooh. and hh holmes oh my effing god i can't wait for that i'm excited that- that is Sable's request. That, that story is crazier than you think it is. It is insane, insane, insane. That is a crazy story. I might story. need to rewatch American Horror Story season five for that, the hotel season, just to like get pumped for it. Yeah, we have some other. Maybe s- that's the new show we should start watching. American Horror Story. Yeah. Love we're it. Sh- we're struggling with the. Oh, television. that first season? That um, the girl, the daughter. Mm-hmm. You got the hots for Teenager. Her. No. Yeah, but in real life, she's not a teenager. Not anymore. Oh. That was like 10 years she ago. She was not a teenager on the show. No, no. Probably 18. Well, now I want to know because like I'm feeling kind of gross. Weird about it? Yeah, well, you shouldn't <laughs> say things you don't feel right about. Okay, Jen, shouldn't mm-hmm. say things. Go back to episode one through 439. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be the moral compass of this program, but it doesn't always work out now, does it? All right, all right. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll be back in 15 minutes from now. So uh, 2.45. And thank you guys so much for being here and and this is, like I said, Talk More to Me. And until next time. Good night, you lovely, lovely people.